In this video, we're going to discuss the geometric properties of the derivative. So we've already introduced the derivative. Uh, we've introduced the notation. We've introduced the concept of higher order derivatives, partial derivatives. Um, so if you need to go back and review those things, go back to those videos, go back and review uh, some of your old stuff from calculus. This is going to be a very important concept for us throughout physical chemistry. Now, derivatives aren't just notational things, functions, things that you can do the functions um, that you get some expression out of. They're representative of visual graphs and, and plots. And so there are geometric properties of derivatives that become important to be able to tell whether a function is increasing or decreasing, whether it has a maximum or a minimum. That's what we mean when we talk about the geometric properties of a derivative. So here I've plotted two um, just sketches of functions. Right uh, on the left, we have a parabola. This is what you typically get from a second order polynomial or quadratic function, right? It gives you some sort of polynomial. Um, and I've also plotted a cubic function. Now, what you'll notice is that along these curves, there's different points where the, the graph or the function is increasing or decreasing. So for parabola, uh, when you're on the negative region, uh, at least for this parabola, you have the function decreasing until it reaches some minimum and then it starts to increase again. So that's going to be very important. The fact that this plot has this point where it reaches a minimum. Now, um, obviously, like I said, before you get to the minimum, the function is decreasing. And once, you, uh, once you, you're past the minimum, the function starts to increase again. But then when we look at this cubic function, Right. Um, and this is indicative of a lot of higher order polynomials as well. Um, this plot actually has minima and maxima. Right. So we have this point where the function starts to increase, then it reaches a maximum. And then it starts to decrease again. It reaches a minimum. Right. And then it increases again. Right. So <clears throat> so this function has a maximum and a minimum, and the parabola here has a minimum. So the whole point of this video is how can we use derivatives to inform, to inform us about whether a function is increasing or decreasing, has a maximum or a minimum. Um, obviously, it would be very tedious if every time we wanted to locate the minimum of a function, we had to plot the entire thing and use that information to find a minimum. Or if we wanted to know whether a function is increasing or decreasing, we would have to plot a bunch of points around the point that we're interested in. But luckily, we can use the derivative in order to figure out this information. So the good thing about minima and maximum um, are that the, the derivative is going to be equal to zero at this point. If you remember, the derivative is you know, basically the slope of the tangent line at that point. Well, if you draw a tangent line to, these, to the minimum right, of this parabola, it's gonna be a straight line. So it should have a slope of zero. Same thing for the maximum and the minimum here. If you draw a tangent line through that point, it's going to be a straight line. So we know that one uh, geometric property of the derivative is that at a maximum or minimum, the first derivative should be equal to zero, right? So this is at a max or min, right? So if we're at a maximum or minimum point, then we know that the first derivative should be equal to zero. So this will help us locate uh, maxim, uh, maximum and minimum uh, in functions, right? So uh, so that's one geometric property of the derivative. But what if at any point along the function, you wanted to figure out whether the, um, the function is increasing or decreasing, right? So we, obviously by looking at the function, you can see whether it's increasing or decreasing. But what if you wanted to figure that out at a point without having the full function plotted? Well, the derivative is also useful. Think about it. If we choose a point here along this uh, decreasing uh, point of the function, right? We draw a tangent line uh, to that point, then the slope is going to be decreasing, right? This line is gonna be going down and that slope is going to be decreasing. Whereas if we choose a point along the increasing section of the parabola, 
we draw a tangent line there, then that means that the, uh, the slope of that tangent line is going to be increasing. So we can use the first derivative here in order to figure out whether a function is increasing or decreasing. So if, uh, if, the, uh, if the derivative is increasing, right? So if it's greater than zero, you get a positive uh, first derivative, then that means that the function is increasing at that point. Right, and if you, by contrast, get the first derivative and it's decreasing, right? You get something that's less than zero, then this is a decreasing point in the function. So like I said, super useful because now you don't have to plot the entire function in order to figure out what's going on with the function at a particular point, right? Um, so the other thing that we want uh, to be able to figure out is you know whether a point that we've reached is a maximum or a minimum. Because keep in mind, if you um, if you figure out that this uh, derivative is zero, right? You figure out that the first derivative is zero, then you know you're at a max or a min. But how do you know whether it's a maximum or a minimum? Well, the second derivative actually comes into play um, here to be able to help figure out whether you actually have a max or a min, right? So this is something called the second derivative test. So we got a second derivative test. This is going to tell you whether you're at a maximum or a minimum, right? So if you evaluate the second derivative, right? Let's say you evaluate the second derivative. Now keep in mind, you're already at the point where the first derivative is zero. So you already know the first derivative is zero. You're at a maximum or a minimum. Now you're using the second derivative to tell you whether you have a maximum or a minimum. So if the second derivative is decreasing, so if you have a second derivative that's negative, that means that this is going to be a maximum. Right, so if second derivative is less than zero, then you're at a max. If the second derivative is greater than zero, then that means you're at a minimum. Right. So um, so why is it that it's kind of flipped like this? Right. So if the function with the first derivative, is, if it's increasing, it's greater than zero, decreasing less than zero. But then we get over to the second derivative test. If it's less than zero, it's a max. If it's greater than zero, it's a minimum. Well, that's because the second derivative is actually measuring or you can think of it as as a, a measure of the curvature of a function. Right. So if you're at a maximum, that means you have something that's like concaving down. Right. You have a, a parabola that's more or less pointing down. So that's why it's going to be less than zero. The curvature is negative. Right. Versus at a minimum, the curvature of the function is going to be uh, positive. Right. So using the second derivative test, we can actually identify whether we're at a maximum or a minimum with respect to the function. Now, um, there's also another possibility here. So if you do this second derivative test and it's actually equal to zero, then that means you're at what's called an inflection point. So an inflection point is not necessarily a max or a min. It just represents a point where the function changes direction. Um, so I didn't draw this up here, but I can kind of draw what an inflection point would look like. Um, so let's just say we're kind of zoomed in on a particular function, right? And let's say we have a piece that kind of goes like this, right? So you have some increasing section and then it's kind of straight and then it curves up, right? This would be an example of an inflection point, right? This is a point where the, the plot changes direction, but it's not necessarily a max or a min, right? So then it's going to have zero curvature at that point. It should be very close to a straight line. So you can use the second, so you can use the derivative in a way that informs what the behavior of the function is at a local point. Um, so that you can know what's going on with the function without having to graph the entire thing. This becomes very useful to us in physical chemistry because often we'll know the, um, the expression for a function, uh, but we don't really, we won't really want to, you know, graph it every single time we want to know what's going on with the function in a local location, right? So, uh, so this becomes a very useful tool uh, for solving problems in physical chemistry.